Quiet, please. Quiet, please. org presents Quiet Please, which is written by and features Paul Mira. Quiet Please for tonight is called Final Rehearsal. When I talk to you about John J. Catherine, I'm talking to you about me. I've got into more battles about my last name. I've had to make it clear to at least four million people that Catherine is my last name, not my first. And in the process, I've accumulated more numerous contusions, fractures, superficial abrasions, black eyes, and bloody noses than can readily be counted by one person. Now, disregard my personal adventures in the field of fisticuffs for the moment and attune your shell-like ear to the singular story of the hat, the bed, and me. However, don't get carried away to the extent of thinking of me as Kitty, or Kate, or any of the other diminutives of my last name, or I'm quite likely to wrap you smugly over the sconce with a stage brace. Start again from the top. Keep it quiet, real quiet. From the top again. Hold on. So hot in here, I need the fan for a bit to recover. Seriously, Bill, if this story weren't such utter drivel, you wouldn't need to threaten to beat up the audience to make them listen to it. Oh, tough guy. I want another ginger ale. All right, Bill, then hold it, hold it. You mind, Bill? Look. Your drinking problem is why we're stuck dealing with this script. All those ginger ales are taking a toll. If I was a drinking man, I'd have a devil one. Everybody, keep Bill Cooper away from the drinks. We've only got a few minutes here to sort this all out. Actually, everybody come on over here. Let's talk this thing out. Ed, you've read the script. What do you think? Well, he must have known what he had in mind. Thanks. I don't know what the narrator's talking about half the time, and the other half's a lot of nonsense anyway. Okay, have it your way. Look, let's all try to drop the antagonism. The, this damn heat's got us at each other's throat. We're all friends here, right? I'm not your friend. I thought we got past that incident, Bill. You sure hold a grudge. I'm here to work. Echo. So am I. Tell me, is this whole hats on beds thing supposed to create dramatic tension somehow? Is something people have seen in their bedrooms countless times supposed to scare them? Sure, I suppose. Look, if I can't understand, how do you expect the audience to, huh? Well, Bill. Maybe it'd help if we could just figure out what genre this thing is supposed to be. Is it a comedy about this bumbling idiot of a failed actor? Or is it a horror story? Or a fantasy or something else? Fantastic stories, I guess. Okay, maybe we're getting somewhere. So it's a fantasy. Supernatural stuff. So the empty room he goes into is supposed to be a fantasy thing, not just his hangover. And the hat on bed curse is supposed to be supernatural. It's still a crap script, but maybe we can figure out how to act these parts now. As far as I'm concerned, he might have just as well fill the time with a half hour of music. I can't do this thing. I've been on my back all day long. Maybe he knows what he wants, but I don't. All right. Pull yourself together, James. You've got like five lines, and I've got a million. Well, how about sound? Just do your best, McClintock. 
There's hardly any effects in this. Just a few drunken stumbles, I think. I know you're going to feel silly putting dramatic stings after lines like, He put my hat on the bed. But that's just how it goes in this business sometimes. Start again from the top. Keep it quiet, real quiet. I'm from the top again. Will you just do one thing for me? Now, maybe this will clear it up. Uh, turn to page 21, 21. Yeah. Line 8. No, I'll start on 10. Yeah, that's it. That dark room bit. I'll read it out. Did you? It was dark. Black dark. I could hardly see the light from the window. Couldn't see it at all, as a matter of fact. And I was so thirsty. I had to have a drink of water. My mouth was just parched. Well, after a while, I couldn't stand it any longer, so I got up. Now, the bathroom's here, you see. My bed is like this, and the dresser's over there, and there's a chair. I got up, and I couldn't find the light switch. I knew I could find my way in the dark to the bathroom, all right, and I did, and I got my drink of water, and my goodness, it tasted good. And then I started back to bed. Bill, congratulations. I don't think there's ever been a duller minute of radio than that. Thanks. Should I keep reading? Did you? And when I came back, the bed was gone. There wasn't any bed. There wasn't any chair where I knew the chair was. And the dresser was gone, too. There wasn't anything in the room. I wandered around there in the dark for ever so long. There wasn't anything in the room, I tell you. I guess this is like a metaphor for your imagination, Bill. All dried up after a hundred plus episodes. Just a barren void now. Not a single idea rattling around in there. That is what I was thinking. Well, what were you thinking? feels like a weak echo of I have been looking for you with none of the emotional context. I suppose. There's not a line in the script that feels original, nor a character who doesn't feel like a flat caricature. What is going on with this John J. Catherine I have to play, anyway? How do I make this guy sound dramatic or sympathetic? How do I make his hat placement superstition feel real and serious? What's going on with the guy? Okay. Now, see, that's what I thought before. I thought it was some sort of unfunny comedy, but then you told me it's a fantasy. How do you tell it all time? A comedy is funny, and a fantasy has amazing things happen. This is neither. Good fun. I don't think you're going to get any listeners agreeing with you, Bill. What's going on out there? Just discussing the script. Well, I'd better go ahead anyway. We'll tighten the closing. It's only 8.20. We got a few minutes. I want to talk about the script a little bit more. That's what I figured. Where were we in the script? Uh, where James comes in? Any of this been helping you understand, James? No, I don't understand it. Yeah, I see. You got about a minute of weak plot and 25 minutes of rambling on like a bum on a soapbox. How'd you come up with so many pages of filler? It's just like playing break. I'll bet. I don't know what he wants me to do. James, all Bill was asking you to do was make a fool of yourself and ruin your career. Now, that's all. Did you? Yeah, you. I just assume not. What you're asking me to do is... James? James, are you okay? What are you doing? Where, where are you going? James? I guess he's busy. I guess we just lost James Monks. I see. Too bad. We can just cut his lines. It's not like it makes it any worse. I'll leave longer pauses to make up the time. Sure. What about the part where John has been dead for three days? Can we punch that up a little? 
add some last minute lines about his experience in the afterlife. Anything would beat him just showing up and saying, I guess I've been dead. Tired. I'm going to bed. Bill? Bill! Where did he go? Well, folks, Bill Cooper just walked off. I guess this will be the last episode of Quiet Please. We'll probably just throw on a couple repeats until the contract runs out. Well, better go ahead anyway. We'll time the closing. Okay. The title of tonight's Quiet Please story was Final Rehearsal. It was written by Paul Narrow, and the man who spoke to you was Paul Narrow. Featured in the cast were William Conrad, Anthony Ellis, and Phyllis Cooper. Now, for a word about next week, it goes to Phyllis Cooper. Next time... I have no idea what I've got for you. I haven't written it yet. You'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for listening. And so until next week at the same time, I am proudly yours, Ernest Chappell.